When the House of Representatives approved the NDAA, or the National Defense Authorization Act, over Memorial Day weekend, the White House warned that the language in that bill was too broad, too powerful for the office of the president, and President Obama would veto the bill if it remained. Then again, two weeks ago, on November 17th, when the Senate approved their version of the bill, the White House issued a warning saying this, this military custody requirement to individuals inside the United States, as some members of Congress have suggested is their intention, would raise serious and unsettled legal questions and would be inconsistent with the fundamental American principle that our military does not patrol our streets. From that statement and others from the office of the president, it appeared that the administration was against Section 1031 because it required the terror suspects be detained by military forces and an exemption could only be granted by the Secretary of Defense. Yesterday, the Obama administration announced that it turns out the president won't veto the NDAA because the military custody mandate has been softened. The bill now gives the president the immediate power to issue a waiver of the military custody requirement instead of the defense secretary and gives the president discretion in implementing these new provisions. All right, so let's just cut through all the spin. The president now says he will sign a bill that stomps on all due process by allowing U.S. citizens to be detained indefinitely without charges filed against them and held without a trial. A bill that allows U.S. citizens to be transported overseas to prisons and held there without charges filed because now he has the power to issue a waiver instead of the Secretary of Defense. So here's the question. Do you believe that President Obama didn't want the power of indefinite detention to be given to the office of the president? According to Senator Carl Levin, who actually helped to write and craft this bill, not only did the president want the power, this administration was the one who demanded the power to detain U.S. citizens indefinitely be placed inside the bill. Listen. And I'm wondering whether the senator is familiar with the fact that the language the language which precluded the application of section 1031 to american citizens was in the bill that we originally approved in the armed services committee and the administration asked us to remove the language which says that u.s citizens and lawful residents would not be subject to this section. Is the senator familiar with the fact that it was the administration that asked us to remove the very language which we had in the bill which passed the committee and that we removed it at the request of the administration that would have said the app that this determination would not apply to U.S. citizens and lawful residents. So here's what you need to know. This is exactly why there are millions of Americans from across the political spectrum who are saying, who cares if the politician has an R by their name or a D by their name? None of these men and women deserve this kind of authority. Our founders and framers designed our Constitution in such a way that the people of this nation would be ruled by law and not by the whims of a ruler. The majority of Americans may be asleep on this. They may have no idea what's happening, even as so many of their rights and your rights are being taken away. Samuel Adams once said that's okay because he said, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. And that is Reality Check.